Just remember, FPL is tough, but you are tougher. Hi guys, I'm FPL Nymphria and welcome back to the home of FPL videos. Blank Game Week 29 is done. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And it's international break. Celebrate good times, come on. Before we take a look to Game Week 30, let's take a look at how I got on in the madness that was Blank Game Week 29. This week I decided to give Sanchez a chance, I figured if there was any week to do so then this was it and thankfully he bagged me 6 points from his clean sheet. Martinez did concede 2 goals so luckily I went for it on Sanchez. Martinez hasn't let me down much this season so thankfully the one week where he has a bit of a slip up I went with Sanchez so I'm pretty stoked about that one. In defence, Sufal should have had an assist if Sushek had not have stolen Antonio's goal. Instead, he got zero points from conceding three goals and getting a yellow card. So, basically, I was another player down for the blank game week. Cheers for that, Sushek. Unfortunately, even though I decided not to play Martinez, I didn't have much of a choice but to play Konza, and he got me just one point. Annoyingly, Veltman could have been in last game week instead of Konza. His assist and clean sheet this week makes him a prime candidate for my one that got away this week. Absolutely gutted. Dallas was a tad bit frustrating as I had hoped for at least a clean sheet from him but it wasn't to be and just two points added from him to my team total. My midfield threw up some surprises this game week and not all good unfortunately. Bale was my first transfer in this week and he didn't even play a minute. So frustrating like ridiculously frustrating. Why did I even bother with that transfer? I mean at one point after seeing them midweek, I was like, I don't really even fancy Bale in my team. But, you know, so many people owned him. I was like, oh, got to think about getting him in, you know, just go for it. And then Son with his international injury, you know, keeping him away from the team completely. That was another kick in the teeth. So absolutely stuffed over by Spurs, basically, in midfield. Yeah, not great at all. Rafinha finally woke up though, so that was a positive, when I needed him the most and he grabbed me a goal and got me a bonus point for 8 points towards my team total. As always, it could have been more, but we can't complain with that. Lingard did come in for Gundog in a minus four move. Obviously the bail bit didn't work out but the Lingard bit definitely did. I just couldn't quite go without him knowing his record against us. Thankfully it paid off with that goal and an assist for 12 points including his bonus. Very, very happy with that. Again, it could have been more but that's a nice situation to be in as FPL managers owning him if not a tad bit frustrating for us. Moving to my forwards, Bamford was an absolute delight to own this week. I was just happy he started given his injury flag, but absolutely delighted with his goal, assist and three bonus points for 11 points. I was quite annoyed, as you know, last game week that I went Antonio over Watkins, but I was looking ahead to this game week and thankfully he came good getting me those two assists for seven points. Again, Suchet should have stayed away from that second assist that Antonio got and it would have been an Antonio goal, but I got the return so I shouldn't really complain. Slightly frustrating though. And the yellow card definitely was quite frustrating and was not welcome. That was not good, Antonio. Kane captain worked out okay. I should have gone with Jesse. The fear got me. I went Kane instead. Still, 14 points is nothing to be sniffed at. I leave any judgement on that penalty aside as, in my opinion, it was a little bit dodgy. He was definitely looking for it. Moving on swiftly. That means these are my three top scorers for game week 29. Rocking Rafinha with his 8 points, Bam Bam Bamford with his 11 points and Jazzy J Lingard with his whopping 14 points. With all of that I got 61 points, that's 57 with my minus 4 buzzing with that. That puts me on a decent green arrow, now currently at 469k, which is the highest I've been this season getting, and a 100k rank rise from that game week. Fab boost before the international break, I could not be happier with that. The move for Jesse went really well, the one for Bale not so much. 
a little niggle that I could have done a little bit better had I not have gone for Bale. Or of course if he just played for a few minutes as there were a lot of subs and vice captains that came in because he didn't play. So, you know, that kind of caused me more hassle than it, it should have done really. But it's a step in the right direction and finally a jump up that I really, really needed because I was stuck there for quite some time. Top 100k is 85 points away, so that's looking really unrealistic for this season. But let's see what we can do. You know, we keep fighting, we keep chugging away and we we'll see what we can come up with before the end of the season. Considering we spent a long, long time down in the million clubs, we got to be happy with this. We got to take it, we got to run with it, and we got to hope for the best. So, on that note, looking ahead to how I'm lining up in game week 30 after the international break. And as you can see, I have a bit of a benching headache as it is. So, I don't think this is the week to wildcard, even though I was considering it. In fact, I'm not even sure what my one transfer is going to be. So, yeah, it's really looking like the wildcard might be pushed down the line a little bit. I heavily regret selling Gundogan now after seeing him score in the FA Cup, though I would have struggled whether or not to play him in game week 30 anyway, so he can be brought back on the wildcard if I decide to wildcard from 30 to 31. I currently have Sonny on the bench given his injury, but if he's back for Newcastle, I have to attack that match given Newcastle's form, don't I? I mean... Yeah, I, I can't leave Sun on the bench if he's back. So my life then becomes very, very difficult. Maybe one of the West Ham lads, I guess, then drops to the bench. I mean, Lingard's form at the moment is crazy, so it probably shouldn't be him. Maybe Antonio? Oh my gosh. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If Son is out past game week 30, I'd be tempted to switch him to Jota against Arsenal because our defence is just shocking at the moment. Or if I wanted to use my one free transfer, I could sell on one of the City defenders for a Chelsea one who face West Brom in game week 30 and are doing very, very well defensively under Tuchel. I would be considering one of them on a wild card anyway, so it would just be getting them in a game week or two earlier. Now, if Sanchez wasn't playing United and City had a slightly better fixture, like somebody other than Leicester, I'd have been very tempted to bench boost this game week. If I make the Chelsea defensive move, it would make the bench boost more palatable. Yet without knowing where the extra fixtures fit in at the moment and whether those last game weeks getting delayed a week might cause a double game week in the last game of the season, I'm tempted to hold my bench boost for that. But yeah, with this benching headache this week, it's tempting. So I just can't see a lot of points for Sanchez against United. Oh my gosh, it's so tough. Again, like I said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, Nimfam. Love hearing from you. My game week 30 captain is likely to still be on Kane. Boring, I know. But to be honest, Bruno, Bamford and Lingard are all in with a shout this week. But Newcastle just looks so bad. I'm so sorry, Newcastle fans. They just look so, so bad. And... I'm really hoping Spurs are up for that match and that it's hurricane time. I mean, yeah, just stick with it and hope for the best. Players I think could be worth some consideration for game week 30 are Jota. He's just 4.1% owned and priced 6.6 .6 mil. He nabbed a goal against Wolves when he last played and looked fresh as a daisy. Given Arsenal have just conceded three goals against West Ham, it shouldn't be a problem for Liverpool to put a few past us. If you shipped out Salah, he could be a cheap way into Liverpool's attack. My second consideration is Aspilicueta. Chelsea have been solid defensively under Tuchel, as I've just mentioned, and Dave, as his mates call him, seems to be at the core of that. Playing 90 minutes in every league game under Chelsea's new manager, he's a little pricier than his teammate Rudiger, who is also on my watch list, but if you can afford it, he seems worth it for the security of starts. And lastly, moving on to the trending transfers this week, let's take a look at the players in and out ahead of game week 30. Bear in mind we are early in the international break, so this is the early movers and shakers in the trending transfers. Of the goalkeepers, Mendy is the trendiest goalkeeper in, with 13 plus thousand purchases at the time of recording. Martinez is the next highest goalkeeper in, with over 30,000 buys. 
McCarthy is still the most transferred out goalkeeper ahead of game week 30 with 4 plus thousand sales. The next highest out is Edison with 2 plus thousand sales. Of the defenders, Dunk is leading the way out after his blank game week stint in manager's teams with 11 plus thousand sales. Galas is the second most sold this week with over 5,000 managers selling on the Leeds defender. Shaw is the trendiest defender in this international break with 17 plus thousand purchases. Asper Laqueta is the second most bought defender with over 12,000 buys. In midfield, Lingard is the trendiest midfielder this week with 28 plus thousand buys. Bruno is the second most transferred in with over 22,000 purchases. Sun is the most switched out midfielder this week due to injury with 73 plus thousand sales. Aubameyang is the next highest midfielder sold this week with over 15,000 FPL managers selling on the Arsenal man. Up front, Watkins is the trendiest forward out this week with 10 plus thousand managers moving on the Aston Villa man. Bamford is joint second most sold forward this week with 10 plus thousand sales. Kane is still the front runner in the forwards category this week with over 12,000 purchases. Bamford is dividing managers it seems as he also comes in as the second most bought forward ahead of game week 30 with 11 plus thousand buys. That's it you guys, thanks for watching, lots of luck for game week 30, I'll catch you in the second week of international break for the lead up to the next game week on the FPL Wildcat and my social media channels. Please, please, please don't forget to check out the sponsors of this video, fancyfootballfix.com. And before you go, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Until next time, have a fabulous international break. Nymphria out.